You may be using Nextdoor for your business if you've set up your business profile and you've gotten some recommendations or at least looked into it. Uh, if you haven't, that's probably the first step you should take on Nextdoor to build your business on there. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner of this video and there's a video on setting up your business page and uh, getting that all set up and how to get recommendations. Um, that's a good place to, to really establish your business in the community. But there are also some other ways you can use to make connections with neighbors and actually tell people about your business. Um, now it has to be that you're doing something with your business. It can't just, you know, you can't just post your business on the news feed. That of course is against next door's terms of service and neighbors will probably report you. Uh, and rightfully so, people don't want um, the next door feed littered with promote people promoting their business. It's about neighbor stuff and benefiting the local community and not just enriching one person. So uh, it has to be community minded. Everything you do on next door should be community minded. So it should benefit the community in some way or be doing something for the community. Um, so events. Um, Events is one way that you can do that. If you're having an event, uh, some kind of event around your business, you know, you could be a, maybe a real estate agent and you're having an open house, or maybe your, um, you know, business location is having a, a barbecue um, to, you know, celebrate the community, you can actually post commercial events. So, you know, concerts, even if they cost money, uh, you can post commercial events on Nextdoor, but there is a specific way you have to go about doing it. So you see I have my business page all set up down here. Um, Experience is set up on there, but uh, you can post events as a person. Now as a business, when you're in your business page, you can't do anything. You pretty much have this. This is it. There, there's not a whole lot. You can open the inbox, you can see what people are leaving for reviews, but you can't do anything beyond this. So uh, you have to actually post events from your personal uh, page. So because it's, you know, it, you're identified as the poster of it, you don't want this to be like a spam kind of event or a fake event or something just to promote your business. It has to actually be something that somebody can go to. Whether it's paid or not, it doesn't matter uh, as long as, you know, it's a in a certain time frame. So in order to post an event on Nextdoor, you have to do it from a computer. There are specific rules from Nextdoor on how you're supposed to post an event. So if you don't follow the rules, I'm gonna kinda go through the, the way you need to do it. Uh, if you don't follow them, then your event's gonna get deleted, you're gonna waste your time, and if you keep doing that and it keeps getting deleted, then you could get banned from e posting events or, I don't know, your account could get suspended on Nextdoor even. So make sure you watch this video all the way through. Um, to make sure you understand how to post an event. Um, so from your computer, do not do it from your mobile phone because the options, you can post events from your mobile phone, but not commercial events. They don't have the options available to remove on the mobile device and it will get banned because you don't have the option to disable what you need to disable. So we'll get there, but just Keep in mind, do not do this from a mobile device, only from a computer. So on the events tab in your local community, you just hit the add events button up here. Uh, and then you get to choose your neighbors. Uh, you can choose your immediate neighborhood and you can choose the immediate neighborhood plus nearby. I would choose the broader audience. There's nothing in the next door rules that says you can't reach the maximum number of people. So do that. Uh, and then choose a category. Choose what most accurately describes your event. In case any of these categories are nothing like what your event is, you can use other. Uh, it's definitely not um, ideal to use other, but it's not going to harm your event in any way. Uh, so then the next thing you need to come up with an event title. That's just a short little title um, that 
uh, says what your event is all about so you don't want it too long because then it gets truncated with these little dots down here that's no good uh, so you want to keep it very concise uh, short the this kind of title right here is great because it's really short and it fits in there I'm not going to get too creative here because this is just a test event that I will delete after I'm done. Uh, but it's short, you know, you, you want to keep that short so it, it's not too much information. Uh, but it's descriptive enough to interest people if they want to click on it for more details. So they click on it and then they'll see more information such as the event description. So the event description can be as long as you want, and in fact, it's really good to put as much detail as you can in here. Um, always a good idea because then all the questions are answered, and you know if you get messages about the event, then answer them directly, and then also maybe edit the event later and add it into the description that answers. Uh, and then also you can, uh, you should probably leave the notify a neighbor. Um, neighbors RSVP you want to leave that on because you know you want to know how your events doing if people are interested in it who might be coming and whatnot so once you get all that filled out click next nothing too special there this is where the really important part comes in um, not quite yet but on this screen so you want to select the date of the event mine's gonna be this Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, of course it's local time uh, and then I want to add an end time. Uh, I'm going to add an end time of 2 p.m. And then you want to include a place or address. I'm going to include, it's just in Roseville, California. That's not very specific. For your event, you would definitely do something very specific for the location. You want to have an address, or if it's a like an arena or some bigger place, then put that. If it's at your business address, put your business address. You want people to be able to tap the directions and have it on their GPS, right to you know on their phone maps location, and so they can go right to the location. Uh, so then on here, you want to add to public event calendar. You're allowed to do that. Uh, this is the part that you can't undo on a mobile device as of right now. I'm sure Nextdoor will update that and I probably won't update this video with that information but I will update the description. You can't really update videos on YouTube or Facebook. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just say, you know, if 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 they haven't changed this yet you have to leave this unchecked you cannot announce this event to a neighbor if it's a commercial event you can't announce it it'll you know message everybody and it gets kind of pestering and if it's a commercial event that's no good it just looks like spam so make sure you do not check this box that is very important if you check it then your event's going to get deleted and you're going to get reported as a spammer and then you may never be trusted again on Nextdoor and the world will end. Okay, maybe it won't be that severe, but uh, just make sure you don't check that. Uh, when you're done there, click Next and you can upload an image. Uh, this is a good idea to upload an image. They give you some options down here, but they're not very many. Uh, and they're pretty generic. So you want to add your own image. So you need to create that image in the right dimension. And I actually, in my screenshot of it, I put the proper dimensions that they recommend. You can put any dimension you want in there, but it's not going to look as good if you use the proper dimensions. Uh, this way you can create the image how you want it to be seen. It won't be cropped or cut off or anything like that. So. 700 pixels by 240 pixels is the ideal screen size. And as you can see here, you can use JPEG, PNG, GIF, or if you want to pronounce it the non-phonetical way, GIF, uh, or TIFF, then you can post in any of those formats. Um, for the GIF format, I don't know if you can um, post animated ones. I haven't tested that out. Uh, but I probably would steer away from that because it would just 
kind of be obnoxious in a feed there and just look too spammy, especially for a commercial event. Maybe if it was a fun free event, then sure, go ahead. But uh, for a business, it just doesn't look that professional. So, you know, if you really don't want to post a picture or choose a picture, or if you really don't want to create a picture, you can choose one of these. Again, they're just kind of generic pictures. Uh, so I'm going to post that one. And then I am going to post my event. So there it is. It brings me right into my event and marks me as the first attendee. I'm going. So it gives a map of where it's located. Um, you can get directions, the time of the event, what from and to, the category, who posted it. So there's me. And then this is where all the event details are. That's You'd want to type as much information as you can. Now here's a really cool feature of this. People can actually add photos to the event. And anybody can add a photo to the event. I can go into a different event and add photos to it. So maybe if you hold the event regularly maybe like the annual uh, annual barbecue for your company and you hold it for the community then you, you know you can ask people hey if you have pictures from the last event feel free to post it in the photos that's some pretty cool user generated content and a good way to spread the word for your event uh, and then if you need to make any changes to your event there's this little a downward carrot thing you just click on it and edit details you can also turn off notifications um, and this is just you know you edit the category the title or the um, description and that's all you can do um, it'll show up in the event section uh, of when the event is so if I refresh this I will see here's my test event um, now, of course, I'm going to want to delete this because I don't want people to see this or clutter up the feed. Uh, but there it is. Test event. I can click into it. And there's me, poster, all this. So I'm going to click this and delete it. And it permanently removes it. Yes, I want to permanently remove it because it's not a real event. It shows up there because it's still cached in my browser. So if I refresh, uh, still there. Okay, took me three times to try to delete it. Did not delete the first two times, but the third time is a charm and it did delete. So it's a little bit picky and choosy on the deleting. So just be sure, you know, you refresh, check the events again, check, make sure if you want to delete an event that it is actually gone. So don't just assume it's gonna work. It doesn't seem to work consistently. So there you have it. Um, I can go into this event and you can see I have the option to add a photo. So I can add another photo. You know that it has the photo that they uploaded in there, but you people can add more. So there you have it. That's how you post an event on Nextdoor for a commercial event. Um, of course, don't do it from a phone and make sure you do not announce it to neighbors. Those are the only real two rules that you have, and of course it needs to be a good event that people would actually go to. Don't just try to promote your business, not like a, a sale event. You don't wanna announce your, your, business, your sale at your business this weekend. That's not really an event, or at least not one for the community. That's just a business event. But maybe you have, um, you know, maybe you're a craft store or something like that or and have uh, canning lessons, um, something like that. Or maybe you're a yoga studio. You can actually hold a free community yoga thing, you know, maybe at a, a park, local park, a, a, like a get together. You can have an event on next door to introduce people to your business, of course, the intent is to introduce people to your business, but it's a free one, you know, one day, one afternoon, a free yoga event, or maybe for kids. You hold a kids yoga event in the park. You can absolutely post that in the event section of Nextdoor. Really great way to introduce your business to new customers, but not be too um, too prom overly promotional and 
uh, you know, do it in a way that's more community oriented. So good luck uh, on posting your event. And if you have any questions, of course, leave it in the comments and have, head over to my website, subscribe to the blog. Uh, also, if you know of any other ways to promote a business on Nextdoor that's actually allowed by Nextdoor, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. I'm always learning about new ways to use Nextdoor as a way to uh, to get out there in your business. So uh, good luck and questions in the comments and thanks for watching. All right, bye-bye. Now that you've checked out an Experience video to help you expand your small business online presence, be sure to subscribe so you can watch more videos as they come out. Or you can check out the ebook that will help you grow your email list without even having a website in case you don't have one. Or you could check out another video.